Uh, what do you think about Starlink and the efforts of Starlink to put a very large number of satellites out there and provide internet access to uh, to Earth? Anyone. To anyone. Generally, I think Starlink is phenomenal. And I would be saying this if it was any company. I want to make that clear that people think I'm just some, you know, SpaceX fanboy or something, and everything no, I, they I do think, is perfect. I think, I think, as you're a fan, I could say you're basically a fan, a fanboy, or just a fan of everybody that's doing <laughs> space stuff. And I don't like. There's no even in this whole conversation. There's no way we cover like 10 percent of what I wanted to talk to you about. So we're jumping around. I mean, there's we could talk probably for another, uh, an hour about Artemis. Uh, we could t we could talk about anything with ULA. Obviously, the all the other all the other commercial efforts. We could talk about the NASA efforts. That you know the, I mean, yeah. And Saturn V. Like, are we going to really go with this conversation? Not talk about Saturn V. <laughs> and we might. Okay. So like, anyway, Starlink. you're a fan of everything. Starlink <laughs> is in general exciting to you, and not for the space assets, but just the potential for humanity. Like, I, I really think even as a consumer of the internet. Personally, our studio space down in Texas, we're stuck with with Mediacom, which has like the least reliable internet service, period. That's the only option. Either that or they're trying to charge me like $20,000 to run a fiber optic cable like 1,000 meters or something. Yeah. Like it's it's insane. I'm not going to do that. I bought Starlink. It helps, but it's still not, you know, amazing. But it has, you can see where this is going in a year, two, three, five years. They're like, oh, I can totally screw this other internet provider. And this is now by far the best option, and it's available literally anywhere. You don't have to be limited to your internet, local internet service provider. Um, and, and on the global scale, of course, you have you know people be able to learn and, and learn about rockets, <laughs> learn about uh, water management and architecture and city planning and fitness and health. All of, the, all of the modern conveniences that we Google every single day, there's people that don't have access to that right now. You know, I, I'm a self-taught rocket nerd. I would not be who I am if it wasn't for the internet in the last seven years, you know, six, seven years. So unlocking the intellectual potential of places like Africa, of, of rural areas that don't currently have internet access. Um, that's a genuine, that's a huge thing. That's like humanitarian 101 is give people access to information. And you like, you know, I think we have this uh, potential to try to step in and, and fix other people's problems. But the reality is like people are smart. Yeah. No matter where you are, you give them the resources to learn. They're going to solve problems. They're going to problem solve. They're going to engineer. They're going to, but if you don't give them access to that information, they're going to be stuck in their, in their cycles, you know? And so I, I think the potential for Starlink is incredible. I think it's already impactful. It's already affecting people in, you know, in rural and indigenous areas. And it's already affecting businesses and all that stuff. I think it's great. I think it is you know, there's some downsides with astronomy, with with ground-based astronomy that it can hinder uh, observations from the ground. Um, there's already a lot of communications between SpaceX and um, astronomical societies and things like that because it is a real concern. You know, it's it, it can ruin observations, it can ruin data. Um, but like one of the big ones, for instance, recently, I think a new thing they're going to be working into is that currently, if a Starlink is flying over. Um, over a ground-based asset, a lot of a lot of ground telescopes actually have a, a laser mm. that goes up and it measures the atmospheric distortion. And the telescopes literally sit there and like by the millisecond fixes, like changes the focus and fixes those atmospheric distortions. Mm. And that laser um, can interfere with satellites. So previously, I th I'm pretty sure uh, that SpaceX actually had to, you know, request that as they're flying over these satellites, they are these telescopes, they turn off the laser. Mm -hmm. And when you have tens of thousands of these things flying, it's you're going to be turning off the laser more than it's on, you know, and just being this insanely inconvenient thing because you're going to have these junctions happen often. And I think one of the things that SpaceX is like, okay, no, 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 you guys keep the laser on. We'll deal with your laser. Um, good, good step, you know, things like that, mitigating the brightness of them so they're not visible uh, under most conditions, of course, like there's still always going to be visible in some Um but then the, the ultimately for me, it's like this, you have this weird, like almost like a puberty of space flight mm -hmm. and, and astronomy where currently it's not cheap enough to really do a ton of 
incredible science or space-based telescopes. You know, we have Webb, we have Hubble, we have, uh, you know, all these other, you know, awesome space-based telescopes, um, Chandra, you know, all, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. And you, uh, it, but it's still so expensive to launch them yeah. that we're still so reliant on our ground telescopes. But in the future, you can see a world where, oh, this is so cheap. We'll just launch, like, we can launch 50 James Webb Space Telescope size telescopes this year for half the price of doing it on Earth, you know, mm -hmm. and get way better data. Mm -hmm. So in the future, I think in 20, 30 years, we'll look at it and be like, oh man, that was an awkward time where yeah. space assets were interfering with this astronomy. But I think in the future, it's like, can you imagine doing space, you know, astronomy from the ground? 